Welcome back to the channel. It's time to take a look at Boeing and just what's been happening in the past 24 hours with the ongoing saga surrounding not just their 7379, but everything that has come following that. There's coverage on Alaska Airlines, the return to service, the Federal Aviation Administration, and some future news. Ten days following a significant incident involving that Alaska Airlines 7379 with routine service from Portland to Ontario, the airline says preliminary inspections have formally begun. Alaska says it's inspecting around 20 planes from the 7379 series over this weekend, as it looks to begin the process of eventually returning the aircraft safely to service. While much focus has been placed on Boeing and its production practices alongside quality control, what is interesting from this latest development is Alaska Airlines will look to enhance their own process when it comes to quality. Additionally, the airline will launch a review into Boeing's product and control systems themselves to better understand how issues can slip through and ultimately impact their aircraft. The major US carrier, as we know, has recently transitioned from Airbus-produced planes to fully Boeing jets for the mainline fleet as it realigns all part of its broader group strategy. As a result, Alaska Airlines relies heavily on the Boeing product, and that falls to the 737 series, from the NG to the MAX. Alaska Airlines is among one of the largest operators of the Dash 9 right around the world, so it needs to ensure that all aircraft deliveries in the future will be of the highest standard. You'd ideally, though, have had all previous aircraft also delivered to the highest standard. Not only is this to ensure the safety of all those who step on board the aircraft, but also to make sure that no further operational meltdowns occur because of quality or design-related issues. While airlines like Alaska look to begin work to return to the plane to service, the most critical part of the approval comes from Boeing and the FAA. This relates to the multi-operator message. Essentially, an MOM, or MUM, is a bulletin provided in this case by Boeing regarding a specific aircraft type that would require very similar work to be undertaken. The FAA reported that they had actually received an MOM from Boeing towards the halfway point of the week just gone. However, revisions needed to be made, and as a new week approached, and as a new week approaches, the FAA still requires further data from Boeing before they can formally approve inspections and prospective maintenance to begin on the grounded type. The FAA also in the past 24 hours formally extended the 7379 grounding. The FAA, however, is genuinely running with the no timeline return by saying for the very first time, these groundings will continue indefinitely. As for airlines, it is a little bit different. Alaska has joined United as well in cancelling services into next week, but the expectation is these cancellations will continue. While these companies do form the bulk, there are other airlines that have had to ground their 7379s and are facing impacts on their daily flying. Alaska said its cancellation show around 20% of the daily schedule being axed, so it isn't necessarily 1% or 2%. The airline is currently working overtime to aid customers who have faced cancellations to really just ensure that they aren't too significantly impacted. Therefore, those currently working in the role of network operations are certainly being put through their paces. A thorough approach to the investigation from the NTSB is something that also continues. The FAA, meanwhile, says it will not formally approve the inspection and maintenance process until a review occurs. This review involves a round of 40 inspections. Once the FAA can give the green light to these alongside further approvals, the formal process will finally take place. The FAA did say that it was encouraged by the exhaustive nature of Boeing's instructions for inspections and maintenance. The American plane maker must get their response to the incident correct. While many alongside Boeing say this incident should never have happened, it has done, and ultimately now it's in the past. There's no changing that. So what Boeing needs to do is make sure that the response from communication on how it gets the plane back in the skies to just being transparent is good. 
And of course, the plane needs to be safe. Trust has to be earned, and critical executives know they've lost that trust again, but believe with time they'll recover from this. There have been calls for those higher up at Boeing to step down, and we'll see how this plays out in the next few weeks or so. But I would hazard to guess that depending on certain findings, that will play a massive role in just how much will change. While the 7379 ungrounding would be the first step in the right direction, for Boeing, they have a lot more to handle following this, as the FAA investigates their production practices. As part of this investigation, the hope is to better understand how quality escapes occur. What comes from all of this? Well, Boeing's 2024 looks very different from what it had initially imagined probably on January 1st, and there still could be very much to come, as I briefly touched on, if investigations into their procedures continue and reveal potentially damning facts. While details about what happened aboard the Alaska flight have come to light, the specifics around why are yet to be determined. The NTSB only recently shipped the door for investigative work to continue. The FAA's head said that he believes it's more than anything related to a quality issue, thus not a result of an actual problem that can be directly connected to the 7379, or for that matter, the 737 MAX series. As a result, it is why we've seen a bit of the focus shift. Don't get me wrong, people will still blame the 737 MAX, and that anger is warranted, but we are now beginning to understand that this is a quality escape, and quality escapes can happen on any aircraft. Boeing will be under the spotlight as the FAA reviews their practices, and other airlines also are hoping to have their burning questions answered on why the product that they're receiving simply isn't up to standard. Alaska Airlines certainly leading the charge here based on what they said. Boeing really couldn't afford such an incident to occur, and frankly, yes, it shouldn't have happened in the first place. Following the incidents of ET302 and JT610 in 2019 and 2018 respectively, revelations highlighted just how poor quality assurance was at the company. New incoming management that replaced those that left during the height of this tragedy and crisis vowed to fix the culture. However, those claims are now being massively questioned, with people saying there's no way you can change a culture that is so now embedded into the company. Additionally, some people have also started to direct fire towards the FAA. These people believe the FAA have been way too lenient on Boeing. You've got safety analysts that then say the FAA may be understaffed to actually focus on Boeing. Then there is the polar opposite, who believe that the FAA shouldn't have to baby Boeing. They are a company at the end of the day and a major one. I do think there's a lot of room to explore the public's perspective on this incident and Boeing in another video. 2024? Well, it's going to be quite the year if the first 15 days are anything to go by. It was initially poised for Boeing to hopefully actually be a quiet one, as quiet would mean nothing was going wrong. But now two weeks into the new year, they're scrambling, with executives already talking about rebuilding and those same executives under a lot of fire. We'll see what happens. Make sure you're staying tuned for all the latest developments, not just on this, but also anything else that comes within the aviation industry, from routes, airlines, Lines, aircraft, and such. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. And we'll fly.